television. We take the programmes so much for granted. But do you ever wonder about how the programmes are actually made? I'll take the really popular ones, the continuous serials like Coronation Street or Dallas. How much planning goes into them? Who does what? Where is it done? In this programme, we try to find out about just one of these serials. Take the high road. Where can he have got to? Really, it's too much. I always knew it was a mistake co-opting him onto the lifeboat committee. Unreliable. Here, he just might be down at the jetty. He's due to go and pick up the school kids soon. I really don't have the time to hang around in the hope that he might turn up. So what else have you got to do? Report to Mrs. Mack how the meeting went. Mr. Mingus, I hope you're not suggesting oh, that ever Arthur. We all know how close you and Mrs. Mack are. What do you mean, close? Close? As in... I have no idea what you're talking about. Anyway, there's no sign of him at the You looking for me? Where have you been? I really don't see what business that is of yours, Mr. Murder. <clears throat> Eddie, there was a meeting in the lifeboat committee half past one, remember? For the perfect location. We need look no further than here, at Ross Dew and Loch Lomond site. Here are the hills, the trees, the bracken, and of course, the loch. All making the perfect backdrop to episode 277 of Take the High Road. Do the last line and move again, will you? Come on then, Mr. Mingus. Then. You're going to really Who? They don't know which one. Sorry, uh, Leslie should be farther in by then. Seven to one. Action. I really don't have the time to hang around in the hope that he might turn up. So what else have you got to do? Report to Mrs. Mack how the meeting went. What you've seen today is the first day's shooting of the ninth series of Take the High Road. It's the first day's shooting on a series of 42 programmes. And the preparation for this started about six months ago. Uh, the normal routine that we follow uh, commences with a, uh, a couple of meetings uh, between all the writers that we use, uh, the editors and myself, where we discuss what's gone before and throw up ideas and batter ideas around uh, about what might come next. Out of that comes a, a great deal of material which is then organized by the story editor and a number of storylines are written for the series. That might be as few as 18 and uh, might be as many as 26 or 30. These storylines are then discussed and argued uh, in terms of policy and casting and so on and so forth. And once they're agreed, they're then divided up into what we call a storyboard. And that storyboard shows 42 episodes. And the story editor will organize what could happen in those 42 episodes, interweaving the stories together. At that stage, of course, we have to start worrying about uh, facilities, the logistics of filming, uh, getting from place to place, how many sets can you have in a given studio, and so on. And once you put all those little bits of puzzle together, then we move on to the stage which is called breakdown. Right, can we clear absolutely all the vehicles, hey, please? On, we might need it again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The story editor then starts to write each one of those programmes as a precede. Uh, that then goes to a writer, the writer, uh, the editors, and I discuss it word for word. Uh, it is then written by the writer. It's then edited by the script editor, who comes in at that stage and makes sure that the continuity is right and so on and so forth. It comes to, uh, finally to, to me as the representative of the company to make sure that we've got all the bits and pieces put together because I'm a, a coordinator, if you like, of everybody's efforts. And then finally it is published and becomes uh, the word. <laughs> When you see actors on screen, you don't get any hint of all the people and equipment that are involved in filming them. Each member of the crew has a very specific job to do, and they require to work together as a team. Actors repeat small sections of each scene many times 
so that a variety of shots can be taken and later edited together. Turn over. Stand right. Camera. Seven take two. Camera. Eight take one. Please. Camera. Nine take two. Stand right. Action, right, please. Action. Action. Always just out of sight is the microphone. The director, as they say, calls the shots. He is also responsible for the actor's performances. Though in a long-running serial, he is helped by the fact that the actors get to know their fictional characters very well. Besides the actors and the film crew, immediately around the camera, are many other people helping to ensure that all goes smoothly, from costume and continuity, to catering and transport, all of it to bring Take the High Road to our screens. Um, There's a huge team involved, obviously. Uh, many people with their own particular responsibilities, and they have direct access to me in order to, uh, that I can ensure that uh, everybody works happily together. Uh, and I also have to represent the company to the program and the program to the company, which I do through my executive producer. I'm involved at the early planning stages of each series. We, for instance, have script conferences. Uh, we discuss the writers, the script editors, the producer and myself, go through possible storylines very thoroughly. We talk about the strategy of how we develop a particular character and so on. Now, I'm involved in all that. I'm not actually involved in the day-to-day -day running of the series. That's the responsibility of the producer. But I do read all the scripts, I read all the script breakdowns, and I can stand back a little bit from the series. And so if a problem arises, uh, the producer would perhaps ask me first what I thought. And because I can take a slightly more distanced view of it, I can give him perhaps a helpful hint or two uh, about you, what we should be doing. You also keep control of the budget. Oh, very much so, yes. That, that's very important. Of course, it's tempting to think of continuous serials like Take the High Road as no more than stories, mere fairy tales for adults. But in all media, there's a message. Well, I wouldn't say, I, I wouldn't say that we have any uh, message in the sense that we are absolutely not here to teach anybody anything. We're not in any business other than in the business of telling stories. Uh, if I can just digress for one second, that arises not from any deliberate decision on my part, but because that is the nature of what we are doing. Yes, but does the programme aim at certain standards, certain values? Yes, because we are working uh, in our particular field, uh, we are set quite firmly in a rural part of the highlands of Scotland. And because our characters are drawn uh, firmly from the kind of characters you might expect to meet here, uh, and because our stories arise from the kind of problems that the people who live here experience day by day, then we tend to reflect uh, the morality of this particular part of the world. It's interesting to note, however, that the kind of morality which is reflected in all soap opera always appears to be the morality of the previous generation. So nobody consciously plans that there should be a message. But surely it's there in the characters' attitudes to life in the things the characters do or don't do. Because it's a, a, a series that's seen in the afternoons, uh, for the most part, on the uh, British network, we do try to make sure that we don't do anything uh, that would offend a very wide audience. We are careful about the use of bad language, for example. Uh, there are certainly no scenes in which uh, explicit sex or violence are depicted. Well, we're fairly sure of uh, the kind of audience we have because uh, a, f a fair amount of research has been done about that. And one of the interesting things about High Road in particular, I can't speak for other soap operas, is that we generate an enormous response from people. Uh, we get uh, an amazing amount of mail uh, from all over the country and from all sorts of people. We know from a combination of all these things that our audience is, uh, it will be mainly middle-aged to older retired people, but not exclusively so. Uh, we tend, unfortunately, to have large numbers of people in this, in this country who uh, are unemployed and therefore in areas where the programme is broadcast in the afternoon they watch it. 
we have, because of our particular storyline, uh, an appeal not only to women but also to men, which is slightly unusual in terms of a soap opera. And because we are also dealing with a, an enclosed community where there are young people, we tend to deal with young people's problems and we get uh, quite a number of viewers amongst younger people too. There's certain qualities in it, which is Scottish life, which you, you do see. And uh, it's an eye-opener for somebody that's living in the city as well. Well, I think it's rather a nice programme. In which way? It's so natural. And uh, I, I love the scenery. And I think the people in it are very nice and very, very, very natural, I think. Um, well, I suppose I watch it because it's, it's Scottish. I like to hear all the Scottish things. It's a change from all the the uh, sort of London type programmes and the English accents. It's a wee bit more like home. <laughs> a lot of people say to me that um, it must surely be popular because of the fact that we film in all that lovely uh, Scottish scenery. And I do think that is an important ingredient. Uh, I don't think it's the, the main one. I think that there are some other important ones. Uh, for example, first of all, I think that the characters are very attractive and the artists who play the, the various characters obviously have a lot of appeal. Uh, for the audience. We've always tried to make sure that the scripts were of the highest possible standard and the storylines uh, are very strong and I think that's also a very important ingredient. And thirdly, fourthly perhaps, um, there's, we've always had a, a strong content of humour in it. I think that people should be able to laugh with the characters as well. And Since we are such good friends. Um, I think I could maybe do you a wee favour. <laughs> yeah, now, I think most of the keys are kept in our room. Oh. Hangs up over here. Uh-huh. Where is this man? Uh, uh, in Vardara. I, I don't think we've met. Well, what's he doing here? It's common knowledge, Mr. Schneiden, that in Vardara and I have been walking out for some time. Really? Aye. Well, it may be common knowledge, but it's of no interest to me at all, except when it's done on my time. Oh, well, uh, I think I'd better be going. Uh, haven't you forgotten something, Edvardara? No, no, I, I don't think so. You haven't kissed me goodbye. Oh, no. Uh, no, no, neither I have. Aye. Not exactly your demon lover, is he? We've been running now for five years, and the audience for it, uh, both in Scotland and elsewhere, has grown steadily uh, throughout that period. So that in the course of the last run, for example, at the end of last year, we were averaging something like five and a half million viewers for an afternoon series, which is a very, very good figure indeed. What we see as Take the High Road is made up of lots of small fragments, but put together so carefully that we never see the joins. The skill is in maintaining the illusion with sets, lights, and of course, actors. That's uh, uh, 275, Jim. Thanks. Yeah. Here you go, sir. Thanks, sir. Right. Thank you. Right then. Seen you both. Yes. Huh? He looks well enough, doesn't he? The way he talked, Brian, it was like a, a stranger playing at being Jimmy. No, no, he, he's just a bit awkward, that's all. I mean, did you want him to come in bawling and shouting? If he had, I'd have felt there was a chance of him coming back, but now I. I don't believe he ever will. Well, this particular part, uh, I had just uh, finished a, a, a sort of mum part in Garnet Way, uh, STV's previous drama serial. And so uh, one of my main concerns was how Isabel was going to be different from Jean Ross. And we, we did the, the sort of physical differences, the, the curly hair and the specs, and of course the accent was going to be different. And uh, the writers had built in a marvellous situation in that uh, at the beginning of the series, Isabel's husband was in jail for murder, so that gave one pause for thought. Uh, I, I suppose there's a, quite a lot of me in Isabel Blair in that we're both um, mothers and housewives, but each 
script brings new situations for her to react to. And although you can uh, draw on your own experience, you know, perhaps uh, 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 an argument you've had with one of your own children, uh, you can relate to the situation. Uh, it's still, you still have to think yourself into Isabel's character, you know. Uh, she's she's a, she's an ordinary woman, which uh, uh, endears her to the public, I think, quite a bit. Uh, they they sometimes I have strange conversations with people in the street on two different levels. So they'll start off calling me Isabel, and the, and then they'll they'll uh, you know talk to me about the price of cauliflowers as myself, and uh, then they'll end up by saying, uh, uh, "Do and more I ever get married?" You know. So you're you're operating on two levels quite often, but I I don't personally take the character home with me. I mean, I'm, this is my sort of 32nd year as an actress, and I've, I've, I've long ago stopped that nonsense because it wouldn't cut any ice at home. Lots of people think that television has unlimited resources, unlimited time and money. It hasn't. So what particular problems have to be overcome in making Take the High Road? I suppose it's a question of organization. Uh, making a serial like Take the High Road is almost like making some kind of factory product. Uh, nevertheless, we try to maintain the highest standards that we can, given that there are certain constraints in terms of time, space, turnaround, and so on. For example, in a play or uh, an episode of a short series, you can expect an actor, an artist, to sustain a long part because he has more time to learn the lines. Uh, in something like Take the High Road, when the only has a week's rehearsal, you have to organize it so that each of the artists perhaps does two, three scenes at the most each week. My responsibility is to work within a given budget. And as you say, a drama is not exactly cheap. Uh, uh, and therefore, you, you, you can't have 40,000 Berber tribesmen suddenly riding over the top of Ben Lomond, because that would be slightly out of my budget. Uh, the second restraint is the, uh, the problem of putting a machine together that will cope with whatever the drama tends to throw up. It is not possible for us to get into any given studio more than, say, four sets uh, in any one week. And therefore, you have to uh, control your storyline in order to allow for such humble things as changing the set. Uh, in time uh, and so on. And the third uh, constriction, if you like, is the question of the logistics of filming. You, you cannot simply quite arbitrarily say that in one episode you're going to be at one end of Loch Lomond and in another part of it you're going to be at the other end because it may be that uh, you would be better using that time uh, filming rather than traveling. Yes. And so that tends to have a reflection on the way that you tackle the story. So all of that has to be taken into account when the storylines are being planned right at the start. If we make a mistake at the early, in the early stage of planning, then we really find ourselves in serious trouble during the, the run of the series. So for the scriptwriter, this is not just the creative writing side of the business, but planning out the nitty gritty. Exactly. It's not only creative writing, it's very careful working out of a, of a, of a plan.